So one of the misconceptions that I find very common when I'm teaching undergraduate students basic metabolism, skeletal muscle metabolism, and sometimes graduate students as well, is that they have a hard time understanding that our ability to produce ATP in the muscle um, aerobically in the mitochondria and also anaerobically outside of the mitochondria and without oxygen, these systems can actually work together and work together all the time. Students would like to understand that when you're doing something aerobic, like just riding on a bike at a consistent intensity, that you're just using the aerobic system. But the minute the person speeds up or has to do some kind of other activity, the anaerobic system is going to be there to help provide that energy. Just like if you ask a person to do a 30 second sprint on a bike, like a wing gate test, students believe that it's the energy provision for that is 100% anaerobic. And of course it isn't. The aerobic system is trying its darndest to turn on as fast as it can and provide some of the aerobic energy as well. And in some people, they have reached virtually their VO2 max in 30 seconds. And at the 30 second mark of the sprint, most people are actually providing more energy aerobically than they are anaerobically because those pathways have been exhausted. So a common misconception that these systems work alone and they virtually never work alone because that's the way um, the muscle has been designed to have these two systems working together, making sure that we produce all of the ATP that we need, even in the most uh, intense activities such that our muscle ATP concentration does not drop very much during these activities.